Michael, who died in Boston, was doing just moments before the attack. And where investigators were searching an apartment overnight. Here's James Ford now from Boston. Let's give you a sense of what is here. Take a look back there. You can see a building with a lot of American flags. That is the Boston Public Library. On the far side of that building is where the finish line to the Boston Marathon is. It's on that finish line that an eight-year-old yesterday ran up to his father to congratulate his father for completing the marathon route. And then the boy ran back toward the crowd. And just then is when the first explosion happened, killing that eight-year-old and severely injuring his mother and one of his two siblings. Very tragic. Where that happened and where the second explosion happened are all behind this street here in a 15-block crime scene where investigators now are doing all they can to gather every shred of evidence as they try to figure out who is behind this attack. There is also another crime scene about eight miles north from here. This was an additional crime scene overnight, about a 15-minute drive from where the double explosions took place along the final stretch of the Boston Marathon route. Federal agents and local police searched an apartment in a building in Revere, Massachusetts, and gathered evidence believed to be connected to the marathon bombings. Also overnight, the number of confirmed injuries rose to at least 144, and the impact of this bomb has left three people dead, including eight-year-old Martin Richard, the son of a well-known community leader in the town of Dorchester, where the boy's family is from, according to the Boston Globe. We're trying to counsel our nine-year-old right now, who's a little bit scared. We just want to get back to Canada and hug our kids. Yeah, it's wrong. It's so wrong. Investigators have detained a 20-year-old man for questioning in relation to this bombing. He's a citizen of Saudi Arabia who has by all accounts been cooperating with detectives, even though the man who's a college student here was tackled by a bystander after running away from the scene. He's said to investigators he was just scared of the massive impact like everyone else. What we've also learned, it appears there were only two explosive devices. A fire at the nearby JFK library was apparently caused by an electrical problem and other rumored devices were only suspicious packages that proved harmless. 30 people are now in critical condition, meaning the number of deaths could rise, and some of those critical injuries required amputations. And the ages of the people injured range from three to 62. This one is definitely bad. Coming up around 9.30 Boston time, there will be a briefing here at the Westin Hotel with officials, including the FBI director. We're also expecting the governor, the mayor, and the police chief to update this situation. Hopefully, there'll be an indication that they are closer to solving this mystery and an update on conditions of people showing that those conditions have improved. That's the latest from here in Boston. I'm James Ford. Back to you now. Again, that briefing 20 minutes from now will keep you posted. Following a tragedy like this, many of you wonder what you can do to help. Well, you can donate blood. The Blood Center of Wisconsin says it has.